The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman. This is the Wednesday edition, Tiger Financial News Network. Uh, 10 o'clock, 10.06 uh, start of the Tiger Technicians Hour. I'm just scrolling across here. I wanted to see if there was anything there. And that's just regular. Okay. So let me just show you this is what I show my subscribers every day. One of the reasons why we've been short for a little while since about, um, I think it was the, the, uh, the actual... Short position was started on the 9th of January uh, of the Dow. What we're looking at here, and this is just a short-term trading position because we still have long-term trading positions from uh, about 200, uh, 211 actually in the diamonds from back in April 2020 and just about 300 um, in October of 2022, yeah. So uh, within that context, what we're looking at here is, look, the Dow's only down 42 points. The, the S&P is actually down 30. But I just wanted to show you this chart. Look at this green nine-period exponential moving average. Look how long it's taken. And it still is still very positive. It's way above the 14-period moving average, except for the first time now, they're both pointing in the downward direction. But that <laughs> doesn't mean anything. That can change. And look at all the support levels, the Chapman Wave automatic support levels right here. You see this, the cyan colored one in the daily chart. And look at the MACD, very weak stochastic down to 67%. Not bad, but it's not good. Uh, unbalanced volume sharp, you know, yes, 120 minute chart. A uh, ton, look at all these red automated Chapman Wave support levels. But the last one, uh, 37187 is the uh, second to the last, and then 370.95 and 370.92, a little cluster between the last, uh, I'd say, two weeks of action. You've got these base lines that are really important to break under 37, and you start to test 38,980, uh, 60, that is the 200 period moving average, but we haven't got there yet. And that's why I've said that this is really, I've I've considered a digestive consolidation phase. I want to talk to some things in a moment, but look at the resistance levels, the automated resistance levels. The other daily chart, 37,966, the um, 37,785, 37,842, 37,860. These are all automated and they're really based on the MACD and the stochastic. Uh, it's work that I had asked my good friend Herb uh, to do a long, long time ago. The Herb has now passed away, so I've never been able to change the colors the way I would like them, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, most importantly, let's just get to this. And it's really important that, yes, the, so yes, the, um, this is crude oil uh, down a dollar. I'll go backwards. All right, crude oil is down dollar thirty one. You see, stuck in the range. In the lower range, see the weekly chart, nine period moving average, very negative. MACD's negative stochastics only at 19%, under 20%. The daily chart's also pretty negative. The weekly chart, uh, it was starting to make an H, a cup pattern, then it uh, failed, and now it's kind of in an H pattern. And what's going on here? Because crude oil, um, you would expect with what's going on in the Middle East, the crude oil would be really much higher. You would expect what's going on in the Middle East, and I discussed this within days after that uh, October 8th attack on Israel, um, the minus 13 in gold right now. And what I'd said is that this particular move to the upside was very unconventional to the usual uh, Middle East Conflagrations where you get crude oil spiking higher and then continuing higher, you get gold moving higher and then continue. This was just like a whoops, what's going on here? And now it says, yeah, whatever it is, the gold um, insurance, in other words, treating gold as insurance for the Middle East, is not doing what was normal. Um, it is something very different. And I had said my suspicion based on the uh, PPA, which is the 
uh, Invesco Aerospace and Defense uh, portfolio said that there was a chance that there'd be some defense and aerospace uh, contractors that would benefit. And I discussed at the time that it looked like Gold, uh, GD, which is General Dynamics, was the one that was benefiting and that Raytheon, which should, in fact, be benefiting because of their uh, the dome, uh, was, but not to the same extent that you would anticipate. And that told me that the ground warfare was more conducive to something else than the normal military operations in Israel, in Gaza, that is. So uh, within that context, um, I think that's the reason why gold is pulling back. But there's something else that's going on here, the dollar. So the dollar is moving up quite sharply. Uh, it made a low at the hundred and uh, in the hundreds. So 120, what was that? 100.62 100. on the 28th of, of December. Now it's at 103.57. This is a pretty big move when you consider that it came down so sharply. It's come back up. It's taken a little longer on the way up. No, it's about the same. But it hasn't taken out the 200 period moving average uh, of 103.79. That's the magnet line. If it starts to go above that, then this pullback in the market is going to be um, a lot more serious. Now, within that context, let me just say that, let me just do this right now. The Dow, this is really nothing when you consider that it's come from the 32,300s, October the 27th, all the way to 37,825. This is this is really time rather than price in the consolidation. That's why I wanted to keep core positions and have a short position based on timing and my analysis of the consolidation. But look at this. I need to put this up here. I have to keep doing it to remind myself. So when I spoke about the Chapman Wave Dark News cloud cover, and I'm really thinking now that I'm now I'm, I'm over the next week or two, I'm going to consolidate to make uh, and I really define what makes this a dark news cloud cover, and and maybe change the name to the Chapman Wave Dark News uh, Index. Mm, just make it as simple as possible. Um, and the reason I wanted to do that is because higher yields all the way through every one of these tops that I, I notated, I, can, I mean, you can go back and back and back. Every one of those tops that I notated with a little rectangle, I said there's yields, there was uh, international, con you know, just un uncertainty around the world. And there were all sorts of things that just pertain to this uh, it included crude oil at different times. But this is the first time I said, I don't know if I can do that. Let me just check here. Yeah, you can barely see it. I guess I'm going to have to change that a little bit. Um, color in. This is going to be full pattern. So full color. Full color. And let me go down to full color right here. I don't know what I'm going to make it. Full color is yellow. Um, I'll make it a little bit light. Hey. They are. Let's see if that's going to do anything. Yes, they are. Okay. You can see a little bit clearer. And, and that just tells me that in this period since the 15th of December where I've been saying I'm anticipating the sideways move in the Dow, I think we're still unfolding. I'll be back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, we'll be back to gold. It's G-O-L-D. This is uh, uh, um, Barrick Gold Call. Big plunge to the downside and uh, definitely again in the Tiger YouTube says, gold is being broken as a hedge. Oh, no. Basil Barrick, gold yesterday, out and said costs uh, came out and said costs are rising 10 percent. Ooh, wow, big move! Just uh, two and a half weeks or three weeks ago, it was up in the uh, 18 area. Now it's at 15.54, and it got it got repelled at the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart. Mm, yeah, this is yeah tough. Um, okay, so I uh, just wanted to go through this. Look, the dollar. The XY, nice move up, up 29 ticks at 103.60. We are still along the dollar from 2018. Haven't changed that position, have taken some money off, but haven't changed the position. USD JPY, so this usually goes in the same direction, not necessarily the same amplitude, but the same direction as, as the dollar. And here it is. What a beautiful, way better move from 140 to 148. What a nice move this is. Um, leg C in the daily chart. And in the weekly chart, it's about a, just over 50% retracement. Um, and from the 151 high uh, back at uh, end, well, September or so last year, and it comes all the way down to 140. So now this is a good move to 148. But you've got the weekly chart with a big red candle last month. And so far this month, big green candle. Um, if it takes out the high of last month on a closing basis, that actually is quite important. I'm not sure how long this is going to last because if you look at the uh, EUR USD, that's we were just looking at the the yen, that's the dollar yen currency pair, and now you've got the currency pair of the euro dollar USD, uh, the dollar our uh, United States dollar. Look, there's your dreaded H, lowercase H, takes out the low, and this is a sharp move down for the second bar. It's the second day, actually, with the doji candle at a peak A. And that just says the 1.080 level of the 200 period moving average is probably a target and it's at 108.5 right now. So that's interesting. Just one more second. I wanted to show you the gold <clears throat> dreaded H pattern. And that takes the 2002 200 period moving average and makes it a target. Look at the GDX. GDX, whoa, sharply low, 27.69. Um, yeah. Oh, and for the first time, we've got an S 
first time in a month or two, we've got an S. That means that the 9 period moving average has gone under the 14 in the weekly chart of the gold miners ETF GDX, trading at 27.67, down 71 cents. Now, let's put this together with uh, silver. Now, remember, I didn't like the silver chart at all recently. And now the silver chart is, let me just get this. There it is. Uh, you're looking at silver down 0.30 at 22.78. Another little dreaded H here. Looks to me like 22.50 pushing away from the 200 period moving average. 20.50 is the target. It's at 22.78 uh, and down 0.30. That's going to be important to hold because if it doesn't, then the 22 low, the 22.28 low, this is the continuous contract low of the 13th of November becomes a target. Um, so within the context of what we're looking at, so let me just sum up. For me, so we are shorted down on a very short-term basis. Uh, not aggressively short, just short. We're short the semiconductors. Um, and the semis are down 359, so $3.59 at 172.10 right now. This peak C, which made a fractional new high, I meant to change it this last night as an F. This is really a case where there's a chance and a very good chance that the high that was just made at 176.85 um, is going to be the high very short term. But a lot depends on whether 169 is taken out within the, by Friday. So today's Wednesday, we've got Thursday, and then we've got Friday. That gets taken out. Then we watch. Now, I, I needed to talk about something because it's I, very few times have I listened to um, Stan Harley. And not being absent, and especially at the the conference the other day, uh, cycle uh, cycle conference. Um, he was so clear back in October, about uh, before October, that there was going to be a late October um, low, and then there was going to well, there were two lows that he said, and both of them were perfect. I think he said October twenty eighth, and then. Another one about two weeks later. And that, I mean, it was just, it was perfect the way he had announced it. And then because of the way he's defined all these different parameters, the last week, the last week has been just for me, I don't know, he's very clear about it, I'm sure. But it just seemed to me that in his cycle work, since the Dow made its high on Friday, which is the 12th, uh, let me just double check on the exact timing and he had said the 16th was where and he initially had said it's it's going to be the it's going to be i i don't even want to look at the other side of what's going to happen there but that that'll be the top and it could be a top for a long time now when we're doing cycle work you can invert the dates and all sorts of things like that but the cycle work that he did was so it, it's been demonstrated for, for a long time now that he's been on with Larry that I've listened to him. And it's been so impressive that I was thinking, how could you get a high and within f a few days get a major low unless we're going in for, uh, and that was on the 12th. So I missed it by a few days. He said the 16th and then he said the 19th. But I, you know, he's talking about it from October it's it's months. So I to me that's not the important missing by a few days. But the direction I'm trying to put this together to say if this is just a high level consolidation, but the SMHs are already at all time highs, well yesterday, all time high, and the Dow a few days ago was at an all time high. It it seems to me if we were to get another big move to the upside and I'm, I'm not decrying or saying anything about his work because it's, it's ongoing, what he said, he said, and, and he's, he's articulated very well. I'm saying for myself, I'm saying the way I'm looking at it, I'm anticipating some kind of longer and, and over a period of another week or two or maybe even three, a little bit deeper pull back because if we start a brand new move from here and you remember the weekly charts this is only um, let me go to the S&P right now because that's a little bit more extended than the Dow that's already in leg B probably a peak B this week there's no other way I can count it if that it was a G at 4607.07 uh, on the week of the 20th 
28th of July. Well, if that's the case, we could have a little bit of a consolidation here and then make a C. What? We have an incredible move from 103.78 on the 27th, the week of the 27th of October. Single leg up over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine weeks, nine consecutive higher highs and basically higher lows. Then one bar rest, then one bar with a fractional new high from 47.93 to 48.02. And then, so do I need to put in one of my Chapman Wave fulcrums here? This is not the uh, Chapman Wave stalk leg formation. This is a fulcrum. This is where that becomes a propeller shaft for a move to the upside. You know, in this environment, I just don't see that. I don't see that. So I'll go on with the analysis as I see it, and I'll talk about it when we return. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back. I just want to show you a couple of things here. So, um, we'll, 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 we'll. So, yes, we did. We made a very nice turn in the market right here. I was at a peak F right. Uh, stop, stop, stop right there. And that was at uh, 720 right there. That was 726 on the uh, 17th. That's today. 
720 was that? Yeah, that was late last night, 720. It was in this morning. Just feels like such a long day already. Yeah, that's right. So that was. And now we've come down from the 47, uh, for 4,800. 4, Point seventy five, we're at forty seven sixty four, but look how important the two hundred period moving average was. Then it wasn't. Then it was, and now again we'll see what that's going to do. And that's at forty seven sixty nine. So if at any point this morning, uh, no, I shouldn't say this morning, even in the next two hours, if the E mini and I did have a Chapman wave high reading on the trend gauge, which said, be careful because uh, there could be some rallies. Even if the price is lower down, be prepared for that. Uh, that's what it says. S&P futures could rally uh, 10 to 15 points. So we've had one rally already. Maybe we get another one. <clears throat> so that's the level to watch. And then what we'll be looking at is what, what would be the next resistance. Certainly the 47, oops, that was a mistake. The 47, yeah. Yeah. So... Within the are really big differences. Look, the 200 period moving average is a 47.69, the one minute chart. The the five minute chart is all the way up at 47.80, and then the 10 minute chart is up at 47.87. So let's watch that closely. At any time during the day, that whole area of the 47.80s is going to be really important because if there is a rally, we're looking at time. And you remember, tops are, are, are they're rotational because all the different sectors and stocks are doing their own thing and getting overbought in their own sequence. Bottoms are made in unison almost always or within a couple of days of one another, but usually all the indices kind of arrive at the bottom of the, on the same day. So as I'm looking at it here, I'm saying this particular index that I was using kind of as a benchmark, right? Ooh, I lost it. All right. Well, it was that yellow chart. Mm -hmm. um, it was, oh, it's the wrong, wrong chart. All right. This one here said that this consolidation is using time more than price because as of now, the leadership has been rotational. And just yesterday, uh, was it yesterday? Look, yes, Apple down to at 181.62, trying to target the 178. We've been talking about that for a while. Uh, but the weekly chart hasn't gone pink yet on the nine period moving average. It's close. The daily chart is in a sell mode. It's got the dreaded H pattern here. So if at any point it takes out 188 on a closing basis, that's fantastic action. Up until then, you've got to be careful. Uh, Microsoft pulled back and made a fantastic run to, oh, put it over here. There it is. Microsoft. So Microsoft is pulling back off the new all-time high yesterday. At 394.03, it's down 3.5 at 386.60. Yeah, this is very important. And not only that, look, the weekly chart <clears throat> uh, still has all the technicals really very strong. On balance volume, though, is starting to weaken. But the price is held, and it says the whole containment area between 380 and 367. That could be... Uh, the digestive phase for a little while. So when so trying to get back to, is it possible that we make some kind of a low <clears throat> instead of making a high over the next few days because you need to have a confirmation that the semis, as far as I'm concerned, that the semis have really, that was it. And this high is going to be there for at least two, three weeks. And it pulls back. And what does it pull back to? It pulls back to the 50-period moving average <clears throat> of 184 or well, this low right here that was made mm, about two weeks ago at one, there it is right there, on the 4th of January of 163.97. And that would just be a minor consolidation after a fantastic move to all-time highs. And that's really what I'm looking at here. That could change, but I don't see any reason to say it's about to change. So I had a couple of questions. Now let me get to them right away before I run out of time. Okay, so... Yeah, oh, January options in Friday. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's going to be a really interesting session. Okay, so a question came in. Could I look at NVIDIA? NVIDIA is trading, made an all-time high yesterday. 
Oh, there was a round number. Is there a round number? Today, uh, no round number. Yesterday, 549 low, and it closed at 563, made a high of 568.35. So what would I say it was, 49, uh, 5, 549, and we're trading at 552. So 549 means that if we close under 549, two out of three sessions, that 549 level is really important because it closes above that. It says just a high level, very short term consolidation, and it could go higher. That's that's uh, Nvidia. But look at this candle here on the weekly chart. It's only Wednesday. It's half. It's not even high. Exactly halfway into the week. So I'm going to watch this very closely. Um, so that was Nvidia. Look at uh, I did Apple. Oh, um, we, we, I want you to do this. So I was asked about WBA. That's Walgreen Boots. And I said, I would just hold off and let's look at it again tomorrow because I wanted to see if it, if it was going to close underneath this long wicked uh, candle before it gapped up. It was a gap down and then it moved up, closed the gap, and now it's back under it. So 22.58 was the low of the 4th of January. And I said, I'm just watching this closely to see if that was an aberrational two-bar move, big green candles, and it was. And that just says to me, Hold off on Walgreens Boots Alliance Inc. drugstores. It's just not ready for prime time yet, but I've got it on my radar, same as I've got Verizon on my radar. See how this uh, was acting so badly. Look at that. Just lower lows and lower lows and lower highs and lower lows. Then at 13.14 on the 6th of October, it starts to move and it gaps up. And since that gap, it hasn't even looked back. It's gapped up to about the 33 level from the 31s. And now it's trading at uh, 39.08, down 21 cents. So it's really important looking at this market saying, all right, what if we make some kind of a low in the market over the next week or so? What would move? Well, I'm watching these very closely because if you look at the monthly chart of Verizon, that is just one ugly going from the 62s down to the uh, 30 level. Oh, that's ugly. Uh, cut it more than cut in half, and now it's trying to bounce. <laughs> and they give dividends. So there are a couple of things that people look at for, uh, and this is what my webinar was about. We haven't gone into this yet, but it's on the list. I'll be back in a moment. Now uh, it's down only 50 minutes. I could just The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Uh, yes, this is some busy time to understand that the magnet of the one minute chart at 4769, you got to get away from that really quickly, got to get to the 4774 level, and then you can start looking at the five minute. This is, in fact, leg C now in the five minute, but that magnet, you got to move away from it. Those magnet lines are really important. Okay, let's get back to our story. So, a, a number of things. Um, so, I mentioned just in looking at different sectors that might be working, uh, the telecommunications like Verizon or not quite so much <clears throat> T, which is a telephone. That's kind of an area that just intrigues me only because you had fantastic gains in the dividend stocks like um, Exxon and Chevron, and now they're just fading. I mean, look at this. Chevron's down 20 cents at 97.49, and that just tells you that that whole that whole concept of um, what's going on in the Middle East with crude oil, even the whole thing with the um, uh, the whole thing with the uh, how can I put this the closing of the canal so that you have to go around the Cape of Good Hope, go right around. I used to see the boats coming around where I lived in Sea Points, Cape Town, South Africa, from my bedroom window as a preteen growing up. Um, I used to see the castle liners and the oil tankers, etc. Yep. Anyway, that was a long time ago. So in the meantime, back at the ranch, what we're looking at is, you see what I mean by the uh, the magnet line? Look at this. There it is. Right there, peak D. Couldn't break above it. Not yet, anyway. Okay. So with that said, now I'm free to do a whole bunch of things, and I'm gonna I've got them all written down here. So I want you to look at uh, I want you to look at let me see go where where was it IBM so IBM has been absolutely oh don't do that it was on the wrong page okay there you are okay now we can say IBM this is on my daily weekly monthly chart and 120 minute chart right there um, look at that move this is so strange I've seen this kind of wiggle. In the daily charts, I'm trying to think offhand. Oh, what was it? Oh, I'll probably come across that chart. There are a couple of charts that look like this, where they've got this strange single leg up in the daily chart. I can understand it in the weekly chart. I can call this an F slash B in the weekly chart. It is so strong. It is a recovery high as we speak, a multi-year high. Uh, in fact, IBM... One of my favorites that we haven't got is in this beautiful bowl-shaped pattern. And in 2024, I would not be surprised if it tests the 206.22 high that was made back in 2013. Um, could it be choppy? Yeah, you can see it's choppy. But it's making higher highs and higher lows. So, yes. So, IBM, that's on my list of stocks. If there is a sudden, very sharp pullback. Stocks of the oldies. They become newbies. I had mentioned this in Xerox. I haven't looked at it for a couple of days, actually. The Xerox had a spectacular move. I mean, look at this. $12 to $18. 
and this is a Xerox. It says printed software, Fujifilm takeover a long, long time ago. But in fact, it does other things as well. I believe it does something in the transportation business. So there are stocks that the old has-beens that are already coming. I mean, like a Cisco. Look at this, Cisco. Just can't get out of its own way. It had a huge gap down from the 50, 53 area back in November. And the next, the next day it opens. And the 46s. I mean, that is a whopper of a move. And where does it get, go to? It gets stalled at the 200 period exponential moving average in the daily chart. Weekly hasn't yet really shown anything that says it could come on. But I love the fact that in the market overall, what we're getting is a rotation. And we are getting a rotation into some areas that have been just horrible for a long time. Now they're coming back again. And that's really important. So question about... Alcoa, yes, Alcoa is on my list of watch stocks. We haven't done anything yet. Made a peak D um, at uh, th in the 35s about uh, three weeks, just the end of this in, in December and middle of December, and now it's trading at 27.33. And that goes together with PAVE. Someone had asked me yesterday, and I forgot about it. PAVE, which is the Global X US Infrastructure and Development ETF, made an all time high a few weeks ago. It's pulling back here. It was a peak F doji candle. It's made a dreaded H and now it's pulling back down 22 cents at 33.24. And that goes together and it says this is their timeout. This is the digester phase of those areas that are done fantastically. They just need a timeout. Look at Caterpillar. Same thing, Caterpillar. It almost looks like that paved chart. Uh, down sharply today, down 6.31 at 280.92. We need patience, and that's why I'm saying with charts like this, to get the kind of low over the next week that says, wow, now we're going to just break to the upside. I'm not sure I see that in the charts just yet. If I get signals, I will follow them. If my unbalanced volume or whatever signals come as we're moving down, if I get those reversals, believe me, it'll be fantastic. I'd love to go with them. But I, I can't see it right now. Look, Triple M, an oldie that became, just for a moment there, a newbie, uh, 85 up to 111. And now it's at 107. Is this the start of a new move? Is this, if I had to do uh, a plumb line, is this the plumb line right here in the monthly chart that says, ha, huh, that was the low right there at about 86? And now we're going to move to the right, to the upside. So this low isn't, isn't going to be taken out in 20, not this first part of 2024. And this is one of the, the oldies that's becoming a newbie. I don't know, but the, the spectacular moves that they've had, 85 uh, up uh, 30 points or not quite 30, 20 something points uh, in just two months after coming down so sharply from 208 down to the 85 level over a couple of years. I'm looking at this and I'm saying, what is in store for 2024? And what I think is in store is that we've rotated. There are some sections that have done fantastically. They'll be back anytime there's a bull move. Those Don't, don't dismiss the, the Magnificent Seven. They haven't gone away. They are there. And it's going to be important that they come back every time there's a bull phase. But... Other areas are going to come on. So Tesla has made a peak F in the daily chart in December, up in the, two, the uh, mid 260s. Comes tumbling down. It's at 213 right now, almost a dreaded H pattern. 201 is going to be really important. The 200 period moving average, that area, I'd say 205 to 201, is going to be key support for Tesla. But Tesla is one of the EVs, the EV sector, that has other things going for it. So uh, it means that you can look at, you know, let's look at Toyota Motors because Honda and Toyota are finally coming into the EV uh, modality. Very nice, the A, B, C, C1, C2. So this is te te um, Toyota Motors trading at 193.67, down about two. You see, this is, this is a chart that says the infrastructure's in play for it. It's organized itself very well. Um, the, the most recent all-time high back in 2022 or January, I think it was, was up in the two, say, 18 area. 
it plummeted down to 125, and now it's in leg D in the monthly chart. So this, uh, the, out of all the motor, motor companies, this is looking really good. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hello, so look at that magnet line. You remember I spoke about 47.69, the one-minute chart? Look at that. It popped it a little bit higher to an E, and now it's down again to 47.67. I've <clears throat> got to push away from that either way. All right, so let me just go back here. <clears throat> So a question came in, Queb, this is China Internet ETF. Yep, down, 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 down. Be really careful. If you're short, that's great. 
and FXI, it's the same thing. Whoa, down again, down 71 and 21, 31. So what I was saying is that Toyota Motors, infrastructure with the EVs and whatever they've done, they've done uh, mostly hybrids up until now. They've got a bunch of electric vehicles. So the chart is holding really well. A better chart, actually, than Honda Motors, HMC. Look at this, HMC. Look at their monthly chart. It's good, but not as good as Toyota. And uh, what was about to do? Uh, yeah, I was about to say, stay tuned for Steve Rose. Check out my opening call. We are short the down. We're short the SMHs. We'll see if all those are going to hold based on Chapway methodology. And meet down at the branch. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And see you tomorrow.